Good morning everybody and welcome back into the final set in the LEGO Legend of Zelda Custom Set Showcase Wave 3 where today we're taking a look at Z0030 with 793 pieces. It's another 18 plus set and this time it is called the Hyrule Castle Botanical Collection. And while I actually had a horrible time making this set, I absolutely loved how it came out and when I rank all of my sets ever in the coming weeks, this is going to be one of my favourites because I just absolutely love how this one turned out. And it started with a really wacky concept but I'll get more into that later on. But for now this is Z0030, the Hyrule Castle Botanical Collection for ages 8 and up with 793 pieces retailing for 50 great British pounds and containing no minifigures. And let's get straight into it with our description. With the most iconic plants from Breath of the Wild will bring a slice of Hyrule to your house. Rearrange the individual flowers to create your own bundle and place your favourite materials to subtly show your attachment to the world of Zelda. And I think this perfectly sums up what this set is, just like the initial botanical collection released by LEGO in 2021 and 2022. Um, I really, really like this. This is exactly where I'd like the botanical collection to go. There are so many fictional and real plants from worlds such as the Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, um, Zelda, and, and so on that could be easily turned into botanical collection models that show off not only a really nice display piece that most people wouldn't be able to tell, but also show off a love of Lego and then this other franchise which they partnered with. And here, I think the Breath of the Wild Flower Collection or Hyrule Botanical Collection really show it off well. Inside our box though we have four numbered bags and without me rambling let's take a look inside our instruction manual. Discover that bag one builds our swift violets and Hyrule herbs, bag two builds all three types of Safina, bag three does the mighty thistle and bag four does the silent princess. Bringing us to a collection that I think looks wonderful all together. I've really really tried hard to balance the collections and this is one of the longest planning windows I've ever spent on a set only beaten out by the DigiLink collection which took a massively long time to plan. But let's break it down flower by flower. I'll talk about the techniques and why each flower was included and I'm just really excited to show this one off. Here are all those flowers split up making them a little less confusing to see and in the set you do get two Hyrule Harbs, three Mighty Thistles, two Silent Princess flowers on the same stem, two of each Safina colour again attached to the same stem and then two Swiss Violets on the same stem as well. Starting off with the Hyrule Herb, you can see it next to its reference inventory on the screen. They are usually like multiple flowers on the same stem and then they join together. You can see here that we're representing the elements using a couple of different techniques, namely using uh, rounded ball elements with the broken eggshell or crown element attached to a flower to represent like the smaller budding variety of the Hyrule Herb. And then the big ones are created with almost the same ball elements just sized up to a 2x2 two two scale, again sitting in crowns. For the leaves over on the left, you can see I'm using a combination of Texic axles and then to like sort of create that like spiky flowery tone, like the, the leaves are very like pointy. They remind me of like a, a lavender plant almost. You can see that I'm using the un, uh, the six stem plant piece with uh, no flowers attached to them to sort of give that look. There's also a couple of the five stem flower pieces being used as uh, like a detail. And then these all feed down into the long Technic axles that were recolored into green for or the, um, Hyrule, the actual botanical collection in 2021. Next up though, we have the Mighty Thistle, which was a color I always knew I wanted to see in this uh, collection from the minute I started designing it. However, um, naturally it's gonna be quite a difficult plant to do. It's got a very conical shape with lots of different colors ranging from the dark reds all the way up to the yellows. And they actually have a very unique leaf type as well, and obviously a brown stem. The technique I chose to use for them is rather unique and I've not seen it used in any sets to this date. I'm using a um, particular core element which you can see is actually being used for the leaves as well where it's these uh, four clip pieces on a round spindle and these actually have the like hand poser pieces which are a stud with a bar connection on the other side allowing me to angle these tiles uh, at a diagonal to each other which allow me to create this gradient. We start with dark red at the bottom using some dish pieces and some one by one tiles at diagonals. Moving into bright orange using the big 2x2 two two tiles, followed by light uh, flamish orange in 1x1 one one tiles and the bottom two of those 3x3 three three dishes, and then moving into yellow to create the top of that conical shape. The um, actual like leaves are created using the horn pieces recolored in dark red and then the like bat wing pieces which you can see most clearly over on the right and then the stems again follow in the Technic axle like shaping just to create some different angles and then go into the big long axles. Overall I really love the shape and while it's not absolutely perfect I do love how this one turned out and I really think it adds a splash of much needed colour to the botanical collection which has a lot of green. 
Next up, we have the silent print test, which compared to its imagery was, this was the important one. Like I knew I had to get this one right or else the whole collection wouldn't work. And I spent a lot of time trying to get the shape of each leaf right and to get it to actually work together. So um, what can I actually talk about here? So the flowers are much bigger than all of them using this octagonal like bar piece, which allows attachments from multiple different places. And they're actually built on two of these stacked on top of each other. You can see the sand green one in the middle image and there are actually five petals. So the top layer includes three petals at odds. And then the bottom one includes the other two with the uh, disc rotated just so they fit perfectly. The leaves are a snot build that are attached together from its bottom using bracket pieces to hold the two together, explaining why on the back we have some snot work and the blue color in the middle is used by stacking of plates and things it was a very hard technique to do and I used multiple different variations to get it right I used the right white stem that appeared in the paragumba and para bomb to um, attach the little stamen in the middle with the uh, bright yellowish orange five petal flower piece and then the actual immediate leaves underneath are supported uh, or made by some one by the four slope elements there are also some candlesticks recolored in green using ball joints to represent like sort of like the plant patterns that go up and then as you move down the stem you can see that the leaves are all attached using sausages and like so many different techniques to get them at the right angles there's also some leaf pieces attached some claw elements in dark green and then they all feed down into once again the big stem element Next up though we have the Safinas which again were a nice simple build that add and bulk some colour using its three varieties. Taking a close look up at the warm Safina in particular you can see that uh, we have the large tooth element being used to sort of represent those more like folded down and like low profile leaves. Uh, and they are attached both upwards and downwards on all three Safinas. And then we have two flower petals, which are just entirely made up of loads and loads of the five flower petal. And while I know you can see a little bit of clipping up in the left hand image, I assure you if I actually have the time to go in and make sure that they weren't clipping instead of studio telling me they weren't clipping, um, that this build does actually work. And it is just a stack of three flower petals with lots of the coral colored flowers to represent the warm Safina. And for the cool and electric Safina, we have blue flowers and light flamish orange flowers, uh, which pretty much are identical. The rest of the build is the same. But I still think it's a nice bit of colour to our build. And here are the three of them together. They're really, really colourful and act as a nice like background piece to the Silent Princess. And then we have the Swift Violet, which is another one which I think came out particularly well. Taking a close look up at the actual flower, we're using a carbonic piece recolored in like the sand violety color. And then in olive green are the little center pieces. We've recolored the wings that were used on the Thestral piece in a Harry Potter set in green to represent like these long flappy and like torn up leaves. And the flower actually comes out of the Technic axles and goes into a conical piece before using some snot techniques to sort of give you that four wide uh, pattern. I actually based this one off one of the existing flowers, like the rose that were appeared in in the actual botanical collection but modify the design heavily as well it's a very different flower but you only get one of them in this set it's one of the more boring ones as far as like it doesn't look like out viral it could just be a real flower but i suppose that's not a bad thing either but when put all together i think it still looks really good and speaking of putting it all together you can see it very clearly here and i definitely think i chose the right flowers in terms of colors there's an awful lot of green going on in the stem so contrasting it high with the white from the silent princess although it was sort of inexcusable if the silent princess wasn't here it's the most iconic flower in all of zelda and i did choose to stick it to breath of the wild despite there being other ones that i could have done i'm thinking particularly back to skyward sword and then like the hawk grass from twilight princess but you never know maybe i'll get the feeling to do one but this was an incredibly hard one to design being based off real life there was no creative liberties taken whatsoever it was just supposed to be the most accurate lego piece for each one and because of that it required a lot of research and while i did kick myself for a bit when i was making it and this set did actually get delayed from the end of wave two all the way to the end of wave three because of it um, I think it was well worth the wait and I could not be happier with the final outcome. I love all the different colours, the flowers, the techniques that I used for them. And honestly, if any more of the pieces existed in real life, I would actually try and build them. However, that is the thing. This is probably the custom set bar, the Digilink stuff and the Spirit Train that actually has the most non-existing pieces. But honestly, I don't care. I absolutely love it and I think it came out spectacularly. Obviously, we we're here to see how these line up with the rest of like the 18 possible display style sets that we have. And we have the Master Koga helmet here, the buildable tassel and tail, the big Hylian shield, and the flowers now joining their ranks 
and um, I still love them. The the way they work, they, they just fit so well in this more like adult line. And I'm really glad that I decided to do some display pieces instead of just play features. Anyway, that's up for you guys to let me know what you thought of this set and um, what you'd like to see from this 18 plus line. I do have another like botanical collection idea for The Legend of Zelda and I think I may be doing that one sooner rather than later. So you guys will have to stick around and see how that turns out. In the meantime, that's it for Wave 3. And I know we started interspersing these videos with the um, like wish lists for what I want to see in real Zelda. But once those finish up, we're going to be moving into fan choice sets. And you'll be seeing those in the coming weeks. But because it's Wave 3 and this is the end, and we're actually a third of the way through the showcase now, I hope you guys will stick around and join me as we take a look back into, well, all of the sets, really. I'm going to show you some never-before-seen concept art for one. But if that's not exactly your style, there are some really, really cool minifigure shots coming up. And, and that's all I'm going to say is um, I've grabbed all the minifigures from each game together. So we're going to finally get to see if you bought every set, how many Breath of the Wild figures you'd have, how many Skyward Sword, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, all of the character groups you can imagine are going to be here. I'm going to tell you what I think the best combination of sets to buy at each price point would be if these were real, as well as hopefully in the future, we're going to do some big mock-ups. So like um, Breath of the Wild, like all the Breath of the Wild sets, like in a giant Hyrule field and stuff. I don't know. It, it's still in the stages and I'm not sure if Studio would cope with all of the sets in together, but there's definitely some retrospect to happen. And obviously, as I mentioned, there are some fan choice stuff coming. I had some suggestions for some more Digilink sets there. I've been some dungeons suggested to me. Uh, and those will be coming soon as well but I hope you'll be patient um, Wave 4 will definitely happen towards the second half of this year but they are a lot of work and I wanted to get some of the ones that you guys have actually suggested to me out there and it's going to be a busy year but um, in the meantime let me know what you thought of the Botanical Collection and your favourite set in Wave 3 overall and consider subscribing if you've stuck around go watch the old ones there's so much content to keep you guys busy and um, I will see you back on Monday with our next episode of whatever we're doing. 